video four in our 10 part series that takes you from beginner all the way through to kind of a power user of ACDC Photo Studio Ultimate. We're going to get to do the fun stuff, the stuff that makes me excited, probably you too, that is image processing. It's why we got into this in the first place. I'm gonna be using the develop suite for this. The develop suite is non-destructive. I'll explain what that means as we go. I'm gonna pick just a, a photo pretty much at random here of one that needs help. Now, this is a folder from a photo shoot that I did for some family friends where their, their daughters were graduating. They asked me to go do a, uh, a shoot for their graduation. And as you can see, this one's got all sorts of problems. But the one thing that I did was basically exposed for skin under a really tricky condition. And I've actually picked a horrible, a horrible exposure on purpose for this one to show you the power of what we can do in processing. So here's some things that you might do with your images. Now, the first thing that's striking me is this crazy horizon line <laughs> that I have on water. That generally drives me crazy. And uh, that's probably the worst one I have ever seen. Excellent pick, Alec. <laughs> uh, so we go into geometry to sort this out. And we're going to straighten our horizon. And I don't know that I'll pull it 100% straight. Maybe I will. I'm gonna pull it 100% straight. Wow, there we go, right like that. Boom, much better already. Now let's go ahead and look at the exposure. I mean, I, I, mean, I could have started there. I would generally start there, but that, uh, that horizon line was so bad, I could not unsee it to see what I had to do with this photo. Overall, I would say the photo's not actually overexposed. We can see there's a bunch of overexposure, but I had to really expose for the skin tones, and, and though I could have taken the exposure down, I would have lo absolutely lost detail in her dark hair. Her dark hair would have become a blob, and we needed to keep that. So my hope is that by recovering some highlights in this image, we can start to get some detail. And there we go, all of a sudden, we got some islands appearing in the background and some water. Of course, it made it dark, right? So we add in fill light to bring that back. And if you look up at our histogram, we're starting to move the histogram towards the center. Now you can see there's some reds that are peaking. And of course they are, it's a sunset. There's a reason for that. I'm sure I would add a bit of saturation on there. Now, one of the things that might help this image, and I do this uh, surprisingly a lot, is dehaze. There's a lot of haziness to this image, and, and especially when, like I like shooting into sunlight, or I like backlighting, and often you'll find your pictures just don't have the contrast that your eyes remember having there. And so I'll use dehaze to bring some of that back, and suddenly it's just like, ah, that's a little more like what I remember it. What you'll find though, is as you roll in this dehaze, see how there's, um, you know, we can definitely see some, you know, sunlight, uh, sun flares that are changing color. That's totally fine, I'm good with that. But what I'm not good with is the amount of magenta in their skin right now. So I would head over to white balance and there's our tint and magenta. And you can see our, our, we got a ton of magenta getting added. I'm just gonna dial that back towards the greens a little too much and we'll just find a happy place. And overall, I'm just kind of looking for an overall happy place for this photo. It still feels a little underexposed to me, but if I go back to the exposures and I increase that exposure, I'm increasing the background, right? It's just like, gosh, if there was only some way to separate the foreground and the background of this image, well, isn't AI awesome? Here we go. So we can actually do that with AI masking and we can have separate controls of background and foreground. So for this, I am just going to select the subject. And so the AI is going to create a mask. It's gonna basically cut around them. There we go, that's, that's who it's saying the mask is for. And I would say that's pretty good. I generally uh, feather the mask a little bit because our eyes are pretty accepting of that stuff. And now I've got total control, total separate control over, over our foreground and background. So I can bring up the exposure on just the girls in the image. 
And not only can I bring up the exposure, I can bring up the contrast on them because I do want them more contrasty. They were in the foreground a whole lot more contrasty than the background. There we go. And now they're saturated. They're a little oversaturated. We'll pull their saturation down. And you know what? It was sunset. Now here's the weird thing about sunsets and you can't do this in a photo, but it happens in real life. In real life, I look at their skin. Their skin is being lit by what's behind me, which is a blue sky. So they're gonna end up very blue. The foreground back here, uh, very orange. And so my eye auto white balances while I'm looking through the shot. We can't do that. Uh, in a single photo, like the camera doesn't do that. The camera doesn't see it that way because it doesn't change. It only captures one white balance. So this is, for me, this is one way that's really changed the way I process pictures and get pictures that I feel represent more credibly what I actually saw and experienced. And I experienced these guys at a sunset and there we go, I can roll in a whole bunch of warmth onto their skin separately from the background. And that looks a little more like I would expect of the background. Uh, let's add a new mask and we're going to select just the background. So this time I'm selecting the background separately. The AI is going to zip through and grab the background for me. Now this is a control for the background. In our background, I'm gonna take our exposure down a little bit. And again, this is this is like a superpower. My eyeballs could do this in real life. There we go. I'm going to bring up the warmth of the background. There we go. You know, this is this is not probably an image that I am going to save in any way, but I picked one that, that needed a ton, a ton of help where I liked the way that they looked. If I have a look at the original image, bam, that's where we were. This is where we ended up. And on a small screen, that's gonna make a massive difference. Like I would, I would never print this. I would probably never give it to a client. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm showing you, showing this to you guys of, of something that I probably wouldn't show other people, of just ways uh, the level to which we can, um, I don't know, save an image or, or make an image acceptable. This was inc an incredibly difficult lighting condition for any camera. It's amazing that we are able to go from there to there. Okay. As I finish that off, if I switch back to manage, here's, I just want to finish off by showing you a little magic about non-destructive editing. So as I pop back to manage mode, um, it says it's applying the changes. What it's really doing is taking all these changes, all this mask information, all these highlights, and storing what it changed in the database. When I look at this picture, believe it or not, this picture is still just a raw image like this one here, uh, and it, in real time is having, is having changes made to it. So if at some point I go, you know what, I might have overdone that a bit, I can go back to develop. It'll be a little slower than usual because it's applying all these changes for me. And I can say, you know what? That masked background, overall, I pushed, I pushed it a little too far on the color temperature. I'm gonna dial it back. And because it's a raw image that's had absolutely no destructive changes made to it, I can change anything about this image. And I just think that's pretty, pretty darned amazing. Let me, let me do one, let me finish off. We'll go back to masking because what I would change is the saturation on the girls. They are still a little oversaturated and they're a little too magenta. And because I've got total separate control over them. There we go, dialing that back a little bit. And overall, I think we can take the white balance a little bit warmer. And this, honestly, I, I do actually do often. I will, 
uh, especially when I'm working on campaigns and I know things are going to get seen on, um, say, Facebook or Instagram. <laughs> it's funny, we do all these huge shoots and then they go on to these tiny, you know, we see them on our tiny little phones. I will work on a photo and then I'll go away and I'll send it to myself, email it to myself and look at it on my phone and go, yeah, you know what? Uh, I could actually get away with more contrast because it's surprising when it's big, it looks like too much. When it's small, it's just like, oh, it always looks better. Um, a little overprocessed when it's small. And there we go, I would change that back. Having gone in and made changes, uh, non-destructive editing, making no adjustments to that raw file at all, all I'm doing is making software adjustments that can be changed and changed and changed again. And I think that is the superpower of the develop module and one of the things that I absolutely love about ACDC. And when you look at all these images here now that were shot in this incredibly difficult lighting condition, which one stands out? There we go. That is a, a, a tiny, tiny smidge of a primer of what you can do in the develop suite. In our next video, I'm going to take you through batch editing, how, batch editing, how we can take the changes of this image and apply them to a bunch of similar images. So stay tuned for that one. Yeah.